Hi there. When we speak, we make sentences. And these sentences together make up the thing that we want to tell. Now, to keep the story interesting, we have to make some breaks between these sentences in order to keep the listener's attention. Now, we take a breath, for instance, between the sentences. And often you can hear if the story has ended or it needs to go on a little further. Well, this, this is exactly what a cadence does in music. A cadence is the end of a phrase which is a musical sentence that determines if the musical part has ended or it should continue to end later on in the piece or song. Now, cadences will help you to tell the musical story that you have in mind. Without cadences, the music would go on and on in an uncategorized, endless stack of chords and melodies. Now, maybe you already know a thing or two about uh, chords and harmonic functions. If not, I strongly advise you to get familiar with a few theoretical concepts, which are all covered uh, in tutorials on the Q Gemtrex channel here on YouTube. These concepts are the circle of fifths and how chords are built. So. Watch this video and this video to learn about these concepts before you dive into the content of this particular video. Now with classical cadences, I do not mean that they are unique to classical music, because they are not. What I do mean is uh, that the classical cadences are the most used and most obvious cadences uh, one can think of in Western music. So we know that the cadences are placed at the end of a musical phrase or sentence. And we can distinguish two kinds of cadences. Uh, the finished cadence and the unfinished cadence. Now say we have this short poem. Once there was an alien from space that was sure to bring on a race. He moved around with awesome pace and won it all without leaving a trace. Now this first sentence, once uh, there was an alien from space, is not finished. And we feel that it has to be followed by the rest of the sentence. Now the second line of this poem comes to an end, comes to a rest, and we know the sentence is finished. Well, the same goes for the next two sentences. Now this is exactly what happens in music. Some musical phrases end and others have the need to go on. And we call this phenomenon the cadence. It's the end of a chord progression and it determines if the progression has ended or it has to continue. For instance, if you have a verse of eight bars, well, you might have a cadence in bars three and four in bars and bars seven and eight. In these bars, the music comes to a certain kind of rest. Now, some of these cadences should give the listener uh, the feeling that the music has to go on. Like for instance, in bar three and four, you want the listener to have the feeling that the verse hasn't ended yet. While in bar 7 and 8, you want to establish a kind of ending, so everybody knows when the chorus kicks in. So, uh, this is where you would use cadences for. There are a lot of possibilities, but we first look at four classical or main cadences. So let's take the next step and study the four main cadences. So we can define four main cadence progressions. The perfect or authentic cadence. The plagal cadence, the imperfect or half cadence, and the deceptive cadence. Now the first two cadences, uh, the perfect and the plagal cadence, are finished cadences because they end on the tonic chord. Now this makes you feel that it has ended, the phrase is finished. And the last two cadences are unfinished cadences that obviously do not end on the tonic, because if they did, it would be a finished cadence. So these unfinished cadences leave room for the music to go on while still creating a moment of rest. Now the first and master of all cadences is the so-called perfect cadence. This cadence really ends the musical phrase to a, def to a definite rest. It's therefore used for endings. Well, the harmonic functions uh, in the perfect cadence are the dominant fifth degree followed by the tonic. In fact, the 5-1 cadence is the strongest in functional harmony. And it sounds like this. 
Now, if you want, you could add a uh, subdominant chord like the minor second degree or the major fourth degree preceding the dominant chord. And it sounds like this. And 251 in jazz is a classical example of a perfect cadence. A subdominant followed by a dominant resolving uh, in a, into the tonic. And check this uh, rock style example with a perfect cadence at the end. Now the plagal cadence is also a finished cadence, but a little more subtle than the perfect cadence. Here the tonic is preceded by the subdominant instead of the dominant chord. So we would play a 4-1 progression instead of a 5-1 progression. Now listen to the example in a major key with the plagal cadence. Again, uh, it is a finished cadence, but in a gentle way, much more gentle than the perfect cadence. Of course, we can also play a plagal cadence in a minor key. Although this is a, a plagal, uh, this is a plagal cadence in a minor key, a minor plagal cadence refers to something else. The minor plagal cadence evolves around the borrowed minor fourth degree from the minor scale. So in the key of C major, you would play uh, a minor subdominant instead of a major one, the F minor chord. And as I said before, this minor fourth degree is taken from the C minor scale, where the fourth degree is minor instead of major. Uh, we could do the same in the E major key. The fourth degree in E major is an A major chord. Let's change this A major chord halfway to an A minor chord, which is borrowed from the E minor key. this uh, progression. It's the minor plagal cadence of the song Creep by Radiohead. The imperfect cadence is an unfinished cadence and it asks for the music to go on. And this cadence always ends on the fifth degree of the scale, which is the dominant chord. Now this chord uh, creates tension and it wants to resolve to the tonic. Possibilities for this cadence are the 1-5 progression, the 2-5 progression and the 4-5 progression. An example of an imperfect or half cadence would sound like this. And in a minor key you could play something like this. The deceptive cadence is widely used by composers in any genre. And it does exactly what it says. It deceives the listener by not playing what you would expect. Instead of playing the tonic after a dominant fifth degree, uh, like in perfect cadence and what everybody expects, the composer uses a sixth degree, which is a minor chord. And this surprises the listener uh, and is therefore a great composition asset. Well, the music seems to end in the tonic but it does not, and it moves to a beautiful sounding minor 6 degree. Now listen to this example. In the minor key it's even uh, more surprising because the 6th degree is a major chord unlike uh, the tonic which is a minor chord and it's all about that major quality that catches the listener's attention 
and creates a new lifting emotion uh, in music. So now you know that there are two main cadences that finishes music. And that is the perfect cadence and the plagal cadence. And you know that there are two main cadences that end the music in a way, but leave room for the music to go on. And these are the imperfect cadence and the deceptive cadence. Now besides the four main cadences, there are some other cadences that work well. And you should, uh, you should know these too. Now one of those cadences is often used in classical music and in pop. It is the so-called Picardi cadence or the Picardi third, where the minor tonic is replaced by a major version of the tonic. So the minor third in the minor scale is raised to a major third and that creates a musical happy ending or happy third as they call it. song, uh, like I'll be back by the Beatles, for instance, uses this Picardi cadence too. The Andalusian cadence owes its name to the flamenco sound uh, of this cadence. And although it sounds Spanish, it is used in modern styles too, like rock and pop. Now the cadence in, is uh, built in a minor key, like this. A tonic, a flat 7, a flat 6, the dominant 5th degree and the tonic. And maybe you recognize this as the song Objection Tango by Shakira. Now this cadence sounds so interesting that you can loop it forever and ever and ever and never get bored. And that's because this cadence has some pretty interesting uh, properties. Although it's obviously a minor cadence, most of the chords are major, except for the tonic. Now this makes the cadence a lighter version of a dark scale. Another interesting aspect in this uh, cadence is that uh, the chord progression seems to fall and this causes a kind of instability, while the dominant fifth degree resolves very strong and upwards to the tonic, and that causes stability. So you see the dualism in this cadence. Another famous example of a song that uses this cadence uh, is the song Smooth Criminal by Michael Jackson. <laughs> the Andalusian cadence will end up with a flat 6, flat 7, 1 cadence. Now because this cadence was more or less colonized by the Super Mario game, this cadence is referred to as the Super Mario cadence. How could it be otherwise? But also a ton of Iron Maiden songs and 80s rock songs all use this type of cadence. The Phrygian cadence is an imperfect cadence that ends on the dominant fifth degree. It's in a minor key and it's all about the inversion of the fourth degree, the inversion of the subdominant. Now in a Phrygian cadence, the dominant fifth degree 
is preceded by the first inversion of that fourth degree. It sounds like this. Now, the Phrygian aspect would be uh, the half step between the bass note of the inverted fourth degree and the bass note of the dominant fifth degree, and that gives that Phrygian sound. In Phrygian cadence, the dominant chord is approached from a semitone above. Now, the backdoor cadence is most often a perfect cadence, where the fifth degree is replaced by a flattened seventh degree. Now, this flattened seventh degree is the major chord that is a whole step below the tonic chord. So the backdoor uh, chord for a C major chord would be a B flat major chord. And the backdoor of an E major chord would be an A, a D major chord. Excuse me. And the backdoor chord of an A major chord would be a G major chord. And so on and so on. So it sounds like this. And the backdoor 2, 5, 1 progression would become a 2, flat, 7, 1 progression in a backdoor variation. Like this. There's also a backdoor 2 5 1 cadence. And in this cadence, the 2 chord is replaced by a popular minor 4th degree, which is also a subdominant and very common replacement of the major 4th degree uh, in a major key. The backdoor 2 5 1 now becomes a minor 4 uh, flat 7 1 progression. And the minor 4 and flat 7 chord have a 2 5 relationship. F minor, B flat, C. A variation of this backdoor 2, 5, 1 progression is created when we substitute the minor fourth degree for its relative major chord. Now, in this case, uh, A flat major is the relative major chord of the F minor chord. Now the cadence looks like this. A flat, B flat, and C. Now, knowledge of the four main cadences with the finished and the two unfinished versions uh, and familiarizing with the other variations of those cadences will definitely help you to get some sensible structure in your music and it will make the whole composition procedure a lot easier, I think. Now you can imagine that there are more cadences to discover, like for instance the turnaround and some other modal variations. Now in this video we have uh, covered the basics and a little bit beyond. Now I hope this was again crystal clear for you. Now, don't forget to subscribe if you want more of this and for additional material you could consider to be my patron on patreon.com slash qjamtracks. Now I say greet from the Netherlands and I'll see you next time. Bye.